I'm Justin Murray from VMware's Technical Marketing here in Palo Alto, and I'm here today with my colleague RJ to talk about big data on vSphere. RJ, may I introduce, ask you to introduce yourself first? Thank you, Justin. Hi, I'm Ajay Sablok, Senior Director of IT Applications for Global Services, Big Data, Enterprise Business Intelligence, and Master Data Management. Ajay, congratulations first of all on the Digital 50, Digital Edge 50 Award that you won recently for your analytics work. Could you tell us a little bit about the business needs and use cases that the company required when they were embarking on big data? Yeah, thank you, Justin. Um, from the very outset, um, we had determined in IT that we would not implement a Hadoop platform until we had a business use case to justify it. The first opportunity came about two years ago when partner marketing and sales operations, along with the pricing teams, got together and determined the need for a list price optimization solution along with uh, you know, a way to build what-if models for deal discount tiers. We looked at the requirements and determined that a lot of the data processing that would be needed for this model would have to have some heavy lifting through a platform such as Hadoop. Hence, uh, we determined the need for a Hadoop implementation and you know, we were able to successfully implement it and, uh, you know, have a successful outcome as well. Deployment. Nice work. Nice mm -hmm. work. And how long has your department been working in the big data area within VMware IT? Well, we started back in March 2015, so it's been two years, mm. and uh, we've come a long way since then. And could you describe for us the users of big data and how they access the data? Yeah, certainly. Uh, we have uh, two categories of users. Um, the first one is a lot of our senior executives in the company, uh, including Pat, our uh, CEO, Zane, our CFO, and Bask, our CIO. They consume a lot of the business metrics that are produced by uh, these advanced analytics models. And you know the consumption is through reports and dashboards that are available to them over mobile devices or on their desktop. And uh, what, what quantity of data are we talking about here and how frequently is it changing? Well, the current uh, Hadoop cluster has a capacity for 300 terabytes of storage and we are about 50% consumed. Mm, mm, very good. And uh, why did you consider virtualizing better than bare metal for your Hadoop environment? Uh, for a few reasons, uh, starting with scalability um, we determined that virtualizing Hadoop would uh, result in a standardized node definition, and we could easily scale the Hadoop cluster up or down by just adding standardized nodes um, that can be provisioned you know, very quickly in a virtual environment. From templates, effectively. Absolutely, from templates. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, uh, you know, that was a great decision. Uh, Plus, I think the processing power in a virtual environment is as good, if not better in some cases. Uh, we also determined that the storage layer that we were planning to use uh, would work you know, pretty effectively with a virtualized environment. Hmm. In fact, we could actually have better control over our storage layer as well. Yeah, so you separated out the storage from the compute layer. Yeah, the, the storage was separated in our case we needed high performance storage, so we, uh, you know, we picked EMC Isilon uh, just because of the quality of service it offers, and also we did not uh, really want Hadoop to have triplicate data segments. So we wanted the data storage management to occur at the physical layer Got it. by the storage device, if possible. So, are you using anything other than virtualization for the platform? So currently, uh, no, it is uh, vSphere only, and uh, you know we are fully virtualized. We are actually 100% virtualized. So anything that is used along with Hadoop, such as uh, you know development tools like Alpine Data Labs or Revolution R, they are all running on virtual machines. Interesting. Just turning to the people now for a second, what sort of personnel and roles did you need to create this environment, and mm -hmm. how many of them, and how long did they work for? Sure. Um, so we had a few key 
roles uh, on, on this project. Uh, the vSphere admin was, of, of course, instrumental in ensuring that the Hadoop cluster, the virtualized uh, infrastructure was designed properly. But then the Hadoop admin was also very important. And, and in fact, the collaboration and the communication between them was super important initially during the design phase to make sure that you know, we came up with an optimal design and, and that the two were compatible. There was also the infrastructure engineer that was needed to configure the storage layer. Yep. Uh, so that's what essentially the, the key roles on the team. Those were the separations of concerns. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there was a choice made of different technologies at the beginning. How were your choices made and, and what were the versions of Hadoop and versions mm -hmm. of storage types that you chose? I think it depends a lot on the business use case, right? So we looked at the data sets that were needed to enable like the list price optimization model. Yep. And we determined that we would require a lot of uh, historical bookings data and different complementary data sets. We determined that Hadoop would contain a lot of this historical data, but some of the complementary data sets would be available in our enterprise data warehouse, which is uh, on the Greenplum technology. So we started looking for a query tool that could um, seamlessly glue you know, the two data sources together. And we found that the Pivotal Hawk query tool uh, would actually do a great job. Which is a SQL engine. It is a SQL engine. It is very high performance. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of does its own, you know, Hawk query or data segments. Yeah. But uh, you know, very good at uh, map reduction type queries. Mm. So we chose that, and then we determined that the Hadoop distribution was being resold by Pivotal through Hortonworks. Yeah. So in essence, we ended up using the Hortonworks Hadoop distribution along with Hawk for high performance SQL querying that could go be, uh, across Hadoop and Greenplum Interesting. at the same time. Interesting. And were any third parties involved with you to help you de design or help you implement sure. the, um, the cluster? Yes, we, uh, we worked with EMC on uh, configuring the storage layer since we used uh, their product for high performance storage. And at the same time, we leveraged a boutique company called Enquero hmm. who had been helping us on the BI cataloging strategy, and uh, they actually provided the Hadoop uh, admin expertise, and uh, together I think we were able to deploy a successful Hadoop cluster. So don't be afraid to seek help from outside people who've done it before. It's a, a good best practice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you should look at augmenting your team with expertise from outside mm. uh, to to ensure that you know the very first initiative or, or the platform design and implementation goes well. And just looking at the timeline, how long did it take from initial conception, and initial looking into the problems, mm -hmm. to having something running and in use? Uh, yeah, so I think the, the very first project, the list price optimization initiative, uh, took us about six months. Uh, we spent a couple of months standing up the Hadoop uh, infrastructure. Uh, and optimizing it, et cetera. And uh, of course, we had to go through all the phases of the project. You know, we developed it, we, we tested all our models to make sure that they were producing the right output. There was the user acceptance testing that followed. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we, we did the production deployment. So all of that took us about six months. Interesting, very good. I'd like to understand a little bit about your architecture, technical choices, separation of compute from storage. Sure. Anything you can say about that area would be interesting. Sure, I can uh, talk about the Hadoop cluster. Um, so, so our cluster has 32 nodes. And you know we kind of dedicated one node as a management node, one as the Hadoop master, yep. and, and one as a master standby. standby. We also used a Hadoop client, and we dedicated a few nodes, like five nodes for uh, data ingestion, and then five for Zookeeper. And then we had 18 uh, nodes dedicated to Hawk segment, Hawk, Hawk data segments, you know, for doing the query heavy lifting. So a medium-sized cluster here, 20, 30 nodes or so, as far as Hadoop is concerned. So it is absolutely a medium-sized cluster, cluster right now. Uh, but you know, I think the use cases are coming at us really fast. Mm. And so we've designed for scalability. And 
as I mentioned initially, having a virtualized architecture does allow us the ability to scale up as right. the load increases. And we would do the same with storage as well. We'll keep adding you know, more and controllers. Just, just coming over to that point, it's important to have your success criteria in front of you as you go on a, a project like this. What were your success criteria for this project? Uh, yeah, I think success criteria is important to ensure that uh, you know the the results are meaningful. Um, we had some project specific success criteria initially to to ensure that what we built technically produced the right results. So we went through the initial you know checks and balances on our list price optimization and the what if models. Um, business users were involved in that testing and they ensured that the output was optimal. And then once we went live we actually conducted some field tests uh, with uh, list price optimization results. Meaning we actually you know, really optimized a few product list prices and tested them in the market and determined if the revenue you know, uptick was in the right direction or not. And sure enough, after a few months, we were able to uh, uh, see some successful results in the field as well. Great, great. It sounds like you learned a lot through this project and you discovered some best practices here. Mm -hmm. If there are any best practices you could give our audience as they embark on a similar project, mm -hmm. what would those best practices be? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the first and foremost, I, I would say, you know, don't build a Hadoop cluster just because it's cool. Uh, I think, you know, uh, allow a business use case to justify it um, and drive the need for it. So you'll, you'll be successful in your journey and others will come as, as they see value in your, in your uh, uh, implementation. The other is, uh, you know, when building a Hadoop cluster, you can consider virtualization. As I said before, I think it has a lot of uh, flexibility uh, in terms of administering it, scaling it up, as well as managing uh, performance and disaster recovery. You may have mission or business critical use cases and they will require you to have uh, data reliability. And that can be easily enabled through a virtualized Hadoop cluster. Hmm. And we did the same thing. And lastly, you know, for performance, determine what your performance needs are. You, know, you might need a high performance uh, storage layer uh, like we did, but you might also be okay with commodity storage. Yeah, you know, because your use cases are not that business critical. So make that determination and accordingly invest and then make sure that you have built in some flexibility for growth. Very good. And it sounds like this application or set of applications is in production now. It's it's serving production needs. That's correct. Yeah, we are in production. What what will be your plans for this over the coming year or two? What's what's in the future? Is the newer technology like Spark potentially an option for you? Yeah, in fact, uh, some of the use cases we are now getting into um, may involve something like personalization, you know, mm -hmm. where users come to our website and we actually personalize the entire buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. um, these kinds of use cases will require real-time response from a platform like Hadoop. Um, however, performance would be a concern and uh, a technology like Spark can most certainly help us overcome it keeping yeah. everything in memory and giving faster response. That's possible. correct. Yeah. So coming to the end here now, Ajay, any final advice you'd like to offer our, our audience here as far as adopting big data is concerned? What should they do first? Or if they're already there, what should they take note of from your project experience? Sure, well, what I would say is, uh, you know, just jump into it and try it out. I think you wouldn't know where the issues and challenges are until you know you you get your hands and feet wet hmm. with this thing, uh, and then consider getting a few business questions uh, first and foremost that you need to find answers to, because pursuing a Hadoop strategy based on that would certainly you know build the momentum and lead to a string of successes. All right. Thank you very much, Ajay. That was a very interesting conversation. Glad to learn about your work. And folks, you can learn more about all the work that goes on at VMware 
on big data at www.vmware.com slash big dash data, vmware.com slash big dash data. And thank you very much for your time today. Hope you enjoyed it.